again, there's not enough conversation about food quality. It's all about quantity. Oh, you should lose weight. You should eat healthier or eat better or eat less. It's not just about less. It's about the quality of the food. Oh, oh, oh. Vasya, Lisa, if in a depression, I eat like an elephant, how to stop myself? Well, what's triggering your depression? What's going on? I would say first, you got to focus on all your seven pillars and making sure that you are make, making sure that your environment, your community, your circle, you're not surrounding yourself with shitty people that are bringing you down. Uh, make sure you're practicing your meditation, you're eating properly, you're sleeping, you're hydrating. It's amazing how closely your mental health is related to your gut health and to what you're consuming and to the quality of the nutrients that you're getting in. If you're not eating quality foods, you're not getting quality fuel, it's going to negatively affect your mental health. So that's one thing. Meditation can help you be more mindful and help catch triggers before they lead you down a dark path. A lot of people... Don't, no one really wants to talk about it. I, I think this is one of the issues with, with science and studies and medication. It's very hard. For example, let's say you eat a shitty, eat fast food. You have one meal. Is one meal going to give you cancer? Is one meal going to make you fat? No, the answer is no. But we all know that it doesn't mean that it's not poison, that it's not shit, that it's not negatively affecting us. So when it comes to depression, it's hard to say, well, or there's, there's no research that shows that diet is directly related to because it's vague, because there's so many different combinations of macronutrients. There's so many different variables with genetics, with other conditions, with other aspects of a human being, with the quantities of the food that are consumed, you know, how much sugar, what type of fast food, but shit food definitely makes it worse. Shit food is definitely going to create a terrible foundation for your overall wellness. And just because it's not, you can't necessarily pinpoint and specifically, like, okay, eating bad causes depression. In many cases, it does. You get these mood swings, you get this, you get the sluggishness, you get the crashes, and this can lead to other triggers that just lead you down those types of episodes. It's just, a, it's very, I don't want to say depressing, it's very discouraging considering how ubiquitous and how common depression is, especially with COVID and everything going on, the lockdowns, um, the fact that there isn't more conversation about food quality. Again, there's not enough conversation about food quality. It's all about quantity. Oh, you should lose weight. You should eat healthier or eat better or eat less. It's not just about less. It's about the quality of the food. It's about the quality of the food. Kashina, shit food makes it worse. When I ate bad, I felt worse mentally. Supergen, eating poor food makes depression worse, at least for me. What else we got here? Let's see here. Achievement, progress, and service help depression. My mom used to send me over to clean my grandparents' house to clean and cook dinner. My grandmother was in a wheelchair, so I'd give him a day off. Your grandfather a day off. That's nice. Also gives you perspective, too. Perspective on, like, wow, I could have a worse situation. I could be physically unhealthy or unable to do things, and it might brighten your mood up. There you go. Krista Kinch, daily walks plus... Daily walks, 30 plus minutes, and brain gains help curb depression. Getting outside, walking. Again, another reason why I'm not in favor of all these lockdowns. I'm not in favor of keeping people inside. You're going to take unhealthy people and make them more unhealthy. And then you're going to take, you saw that article we read at the beginning, what three or 4 billion people are going to be overweight by 2050, 1.5 obese worldwide. So you're taking unhealthy people. You're going to make them less healthy, take away more of their money, take away more of their purpose, make them more depressed make them drink more and eat more garbage food. They have less money. They're going to buy more crap. They're going to, they're going to cope more. And then you're taking healthy people and you're making them less healthy by keeping them inside. You're affecting negatively affecting their mental health, um, affecting their, their ability to make money, their ability to socialize, getting out in the sun. Of course, in colder climates, there isn't that much sun, but there's still sun during the day. Even if it's cold, like you might get some sun, 
but obviously it's not like you're gonna be out there in a t-shirt when it's 10 degrees. But it's it's really a bad situation. We're compounding it by that's why I'm not a I'm not a fan of the lockdowns just because you have healthy people that are gonna be less healthy, and that's gonna make them more susceptible to problems and issues with COVID. It's just gonna lead to more. This is gonna lead to more. Take some more thoughts on it. Let's see, AMZ, the dark crystal. I've noticed my depression has gotten better since I started the elimination diet and being active overall. When I eat shit food, I feel like shit mentally and physically. Makes sense. Makes sense. Relevant, I'll topic my melanin is popping. I'm taking skeletons on closets and making new deposits. I'm in my element, no Ollie's, your children popping.